the Dungeons and Dragons movie is a hit. So is a sequel on the way? I want it. Come on, give me it. Give me it. To the surprise of many, Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves ran away with the box office this weekend, bringing in an estimated $38 million domestically and an estimated $72 million in the worldwide box office. This is $8 million over the original tracking for the film domestically and indicates that the D&D brand is ready to launch an actual movie franchise. We'll also note that the D&D movie beat out John Wick, although it probably won't have the same success hanging on to the box office next weekend due to the release of the Mario movie and it being Easter weekend. Now, digging a little deeper into the number, the movie had strong debuts in the UK, Mexico, Australia, Italy, and Spain, although it didn't quite make as much of an impact in China, Japan, or Korea. This does mirror D&D's diminished presence in Japan and elsewhere. Uh, in Japan, Call of Cthulhu sales often outpace D&D sales in game stores. Now, box office analysts note that the movie benefited from strong word of mouth and an aggressive preview period, where Paramount teamed up with companies like Amazon and AMC to release multiple early screenings. This and strong reviews, the movie was certified fresh by Rotten Tomatoes with a 91% review score, helped people show up at the box office and give the D&D movie an unexpected boost. So, what does this mean for Dungeons & Dragons moving forward? Well, Hasbro now has proof that Dungeons & Dragons can exist as a live-action franchise, you know, provided that it has the right stars, the right script, and the right marketing. This not only bodes well for the Dungeons & Dragons TV plans, which we'll note was already in the works and will likely tie into the movie somehow, but also for Joe Manganiello's Dragonlance project, which he conveniently mentioned during last week's D&D Beyond. Assuming that the D&D movie continues to be a success and warrants a sequel, the directors of Honor Among Thieves have already tossed out a few ideas on how they could build the franchise. Not only is there that whole Zastam subplot that can be followed up on, we could also see the characters literally level up with Chris Pine's bard character actually casting a spell in a sequel, for instance. Or they could bring in other iconic D&D characters, such as Dritz himself. At one point in time, the Honored Among Thieves directors even mentioned that they had thought about including Dritz somehow in the first movie. There's even the possibility that a sequel could go into an entirely different setting other than the Forgotten Realms. So even a tie-in with Joe Manganiello's Dragonlance plans is a possibility. It also means that we probably won't see a slowdown of the push to make Dungeons & Dragons a household brand. Dungeons & Dragons merchandise and licensed products have been all over lately, and that's probably not going to stop anytime soon. It seems like Hasbro is content to let wizards use Dungeons & Dragons to build a backdrop that they can also use for D&D movies and TV. The game will be the foundation on which the TV and movies stand, and we probably shouldn't expect any weird dictates to come through to better sync up the movies with the games. You know, uh, sure, we're going to see a couple of tie-in products like what we saw in D&D Beyond, but don't expect the D&D adventures to get written to get translated into D&D movies. So it's looking like it's going to be a whole new era for Dungeons & Dragons. The next few years are going to be very, very interesting. So, are you surprised that the D&D movie did so well at the box office? Let us know in the comments section and don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons.